Uh, can I call you Steve? Yeah, Stone Cold Steve. Absolutely. Steve, <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, I still wear them now. I mean, I wear jorts because of you. You know what I mean? Your battle with Vince McMahon, I think, gave the entire world about a, you know, people could live through you telling their boss to go fuck themselves. I mean, like everything you've done, I'm very appreciative of. And I go through your history in wrestling, you know, obviously stunning Steve and Hollywood. whenever you landed on Stone Cold Steve Austin, how thankful were you? Because it feels like that's who you actually are. And it was it almost came naturally and easy to you. You know, and that, that's part of the process, man, finding out who and what you actually are and who you want to be. And, and it turns out when I was trying to be stunning Steve and when I first started off, I think it's, it's like a lot of people, you're, you're kind of almost trying to be a wrestler or pretending to be a wrestler. You have to be a wrestler. And when I found out, you know, like when I was lacing up to play college football or in high school football or doing anything competitive, man, I'm very intense. And so, you know, professional wrestling, for whatever people think it is, is very intense and is very competitive. And, uh, for, it, yeah, from a work aspect, it is what it is. But in a competitive uh, atmosphere, that is who and what I am. And when I discovered that and then I said, hey, man, let me just start, start talking all this shit I heard growing up in South Texas. It resonated <laughs> with people. And then when you fight, when you identify with that character, that gives you your base from which you have all of your foundation. And so character is so much a part and so important to the business. But you don't pick it up initially because you're so caught up in trying to learn how to work, uh, just the mechanics, then the psychology. But, man, it really starts and stops with an identity, and Stone Cold is who and what I am, 24-7. Yeah, well, th I think that's why you've had so much success since being uh, in wrestling or whatever. And uh, Straight Up Steve Austin, by the way, Season 2 debuts Monday, January 11th on USA after Monday Night Raw. There's been some memorable moments uh, from that show that has come out. Also, your podcast on WWE Network is awesome. It is must-watch every single time. I really appreciate everything you do. Kind of give us a look behind the scenes of something that I was a massive fan of growing up whenever older wrestlers come back to the wwe they always uh, obviously not now because of quarantine and everything being shut down but you hear them talk about how they hope that the fans remember them right they always like they, that's like a conversation piece they're like you know when i go through that curtain i hope the fans remember me and no matter how big the star is i feel like a lot of people have said that it feels like still to this day and probably until you're done on this planet when that glass hits in an arena the place is going to explode is there ever a time where that gets old to you because it still happens every single time you go out there it has to be fucking awesome <laughs> that anytime you walk into a place first of all there's push and then everybody loses their mind even in a time where crowds don't do that anymore does that ever get old to you man if that feeling ever got old to anybody you might as well hit him in the head with a shovel and just get him out of the <laughs> You live and die by that. You know, from you, you've got to go out there in front of some crowds. It's, it, it is what it is right now. But and plus, being on the football field, dude, you you know what it's like, and you live and die by that because it's that affirmation. It's like, hey, man, yeah, these motherfuckers still remember. <laughs> and you know, because now it's almost a thing. Like, hey, man, Austin's here is going to get this hellacious pop. I got to see it to believe it. So when it keeps happening, it's still like, you know. You live and die by it. Yeah, it, it, it's everything because you would think, dude, I retired in 2003 and I wish I could have rode, you know, down the road a few more years, but it was what it was. And so when you've been gone that long, people can forget, but I guess, and I ain't blowing smoke up my ass, but I guess I resonated with the crowd so much <laughs> that they still remember. And I got to give a lot of props to, you know, the WWE Network and those video games that they keep coming up with that keep guys like me and all my peers you know, kind of still fresh in people's minds. So it, it is badass. And, and I'm so appreciative of it because, dude, I remember, you know, getting suplexed in Chevrolet dealerships way back in the day in Dallas, Texas, and working in front of shit crowds all over Tennessee. Territory was down. And then finally you make something, you come up with this character that is still resonating with people and they know who that guy is. It's badass.